The last time I was in this airport, I was heading to one of the biggest, busiest cities in the world. And this time I'm doing pretty much the opposite. Hey, it's Josh, and since I'm gonna be representing Canada at the Mr. Gay World competition later this year, I figure it only makes sense that I go and check out more of the LGBTQ community in my own country. And typically when we think of where gay people live, we think of major centers, but of course, they're everywhere. So I'm gonna to go to a much smaller city on this trip, Penticton, British Columbia, because they actually have a pride society there, although no Pride Parade or Festival. Apparently the president of the Pride Society doesn't think they need either one. So I want to find out what the story is behind that, meet with her, and also just check it out as the amazing winter wonderland that it's supposed to be. Let's go. Well, it was definitely easier to get to Penticton from Vancouver than it was to get to New York from Vancouver because the flight was like 45 minutes and here I am. I got the whole day ahead of me. So I'm gonna go have a nice lunch and then I'm actually gonna go fat biking, not because I ate too much at lunch, but because the tires are fat. And then any calories I burn off from that, which won't really be many because the bikes are electric, will be replenished by having a nice dinner. So let's go explore Penticton. <laughs> Good morning, what a beautiful winter day. It's the perfect day to go snowshoeing and ice fishing. It does not get a lot more Canadian than that, unless we played hockey or went curling, but we're not gonna do that. Afterwards, I'm gonna warm up by having a wine experience and going to a winery, because that's a big deal here as well. I mean, you gotta do these things for research. <laughs> I think it's pretty safe to say that it's a long underwear kind of day out there. I find the trick is to just dress in layers. I have literally two layers of everything from socks and underwear to pants and shirts and hats and gloves, you name it, two layers, and then I'm comfortable. And today I'm gonna go skiing. So I'm spending the day at the ski hill, gonna have some food there. In the evening there's a brew ski party, so I wanna be dressed for it. And then after that, I'm gonna meet with the president of the Pride Society to ask her some questions.
All right, the day has come. It is time to meet with Karen, the president of the South Okanagan Similkameen Pride Society, which is SOS Pride for short. So I'm not sure if that's some sort of hidden distress signal, like, help, I'm the only gay in the village, or what's going on there. But I want to meet with her, ask her what it's like to be LGBTQ in such a small community, and also ask her why there isn't a pride parade or festival, and apparently why she doesn't even think they should have one. Let's go find out. So Karen, you are the president of the SOS Pride Society? I am. Is SOS like a hidden distress signal because you are just <laughs> the only LGBTQ person here? I guess it could be interpreted that way. <laughs> no, it is the South Okanagan Similkameen Pride Society. What's it like being part of an LGBTQ community in such a small city? It is challenging and exciting and really rewarding all at the same time. How big would the community be here? The community is big and it's spread out. It's quite a large geographic area. So yeah. from Princeton to Summerland and then a Soyuz. And so that's quite a large area. Well, so typically when we think of LGBTQ people, they live in large centers mm -hmm. and it's more accepted there. And, you know, small cities or small towns get kind of a bad reputation for how they treat people in our community. Do you, would you say Penticton is gay friendly or do you have to kind of keep it a bit under wraps? In the last um, five to seven years, it has been really open and accepting yeah. and our city hall works closely with us too. I don't know if you noticed when you came into town, we have the rainbow flag, we have the trans flag hanging wow. at both sides of the town and also at City Hall and at the high school. We promote the awareness, we promote welcoming, and we promote inclusiveness. But there isn't a Pride Festival or a Pride Parade. Why is that? Is there Pride Parades outside of Vancouver? Even in some of the larger centers, it's marches. So do you think there would ever be a parade or festival here? Um, we are working on um, some events for this coming June. And something that makes Penticton unique, which you probably didn't do because it's winter, is the channel float. Okay. And so we're going to have the first ever fruit float. Oh. Which is totally unique to Penticton. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you, we will. I've had a great time in Penticton. I've really enjoyed the winter activities and I felt totally comfortable just being me. Good. What more could you ask for? Nothing. Maybe a little bit warmer weather? Maybe a little bit less wind. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. It actually sounds like a pretty awesome LGBTQ community here in little old Penticton. And I get it, you don't really need a parade and a festival when it's such a small group of people, but it's awesome that they have monthly socials. And I think it's especially great for the LGBTQ youth in this city who get to see that there is a pride society and a place to belong. So thanks for coming along with me on my winter adventure here in Penticton. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and leave me a comment below letting me know what you think. Bye.